Thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. More on them later. Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. This is the third part of my small series on pure data and plug data, and I'm on a mission to turn the Yamaha EX5's water effect into a usable pedal. But today I'll take a short detour and use pure data on Zynthion for further developing my project. And if you think that's interesting, please join me in this video. Here we go. Okay, my goal today is to create a granular delay. This means we'll capture short slices of audio from the audio input, store them in memory and pitch shift them, then send them into a delay line and then route the result to the audio output. We will also add some controls to tweak some of the parameters of this effect. I've already introduced plug data and how it works in previous videos in this series, so here's just a short reminder. Place audio objects on a canvas, then connect them with virtual cables quite like a modular synth. The results can then be compiled for a number of target devices, among them the Daisy Seed MPU. Let's start by adding the analog to digital converter short ADC to our canvas. This is our audio input. We will also need an audio output short DAC or digital to analog converter. As we want to store short slices of audio in memory, the next thing we will add here is an audio buffer. This is an array or collection of numbers that will hold sample data for up to one second of audio. Now let's capture a slice of audio. A good strategy here is to listen to the audio input, measure the volume and start recording whenever a certain threshold is exceeded. Now pure data has the threshold object for that, which can trigger a starting signal, a so-called bang, when a certain volume level is reached. But unfortunately, that isn't compatible with the heavy compiler, so we can't use it on the daisy seed. So we will have to come up with another solution instead. First, let's add a mixer for both left and right audio channels. To do this, we'll attach a snapshot. This will capture exactly one audio sample when triggered and convert it to a floating point number or float. My idea here is that if there is a signal on the audio import, this value will be above or below zero. The snapshot needs a trigger like a button on a camera. It won't run by itself. I could attach a bang to it and trigger it manually, like here. But for continuous effect, it's better to run a high-speed metronome that clicks the snapshot periodically automatically, like an action camera at a sports event. So let's add a metronome at 150 milliseconds, and that metronome needs a start signal itself, so let's attach both a normal bang for starting manually and a load bang which starts the metronome once the effect is loaded. If you attach a flow to the snapshot and trigger the bang, the metronome starts running, capturing momentary values as you can see here. But this is just one sample. We want to capture something we can play back. So let's create an if statement. If the absolute value in the snapshot is bigger than 1.01, .01, Let's capture a 140 millisecond slice of audio. 140 is a bit shorter than the metronome interval, so we won't have to deal with overlapping audio in the end. So add an absolute object here, then a bigger than 1.01 .01 object and then a select one object. ABS or absolute converts negative numbers to positive ones and the greater than 1.01 .01 object will signal true or 1 when the absolute value of the snapshot is bigger than 1.01 .01, which will then make the select one object create a bang. In other words, each time the volume is above 0.01 .01, this creates a bang. 
Right, so now each time the volume rises on the audio input, a start signal is triggered. We can now use that signal to capture audio. For this, we need a tab write object, which will write to our audio buffer. Syntax is like this. The tab write object can receive a start or stop signal, so let's add that as well. And now the stop signal should occur 140 milliseconds after the start signal, so let's add a delay command here. We need to make sure that the start button is pressed before the stop button. So let's add a TBB object here, which is an order of events, trigger, bang, bang. Connect the start signal to the first bang and the stop signal to the second one. If we now make a loud noise, we'll see a wave shape arriving in the audio buffer. This is a good moment to set the size of the audio buffer to a sample rate, 44,100, so we can catch up to one second of audio. And right, that's one half done. And if you think that's brilliant, I have to tell you no. Today's sponsor is Brilliant. Brilliant is an online learning platform that helps you become a better thinker and problem solver with thousands of visual interactive lessons in math, science, programming, data analysis and AI. Learning with Brilliant is super effective as each lesson is filled with interactive examples that let you try the concepts you're learning. For example, my kids are using Brilliant as a supplement to school lessons on solving equations. Trying the examples presented by Brilliant is often more intuitive and easier to understand than solving textbook exercises. As a complement to my video series, you could try the Thinking in Code course, which is a highly visual course that refreshes your knowledge on programming and logic basics in no time with some superb examples. All it takes is a couple of minutes per day, which is easily done in a lunch break or on the train. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Steinberg or scan the QR code on screen or you can click on the link in the description of this video. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Now with your problem solving skills refreshed, let's go back into plug data. Okay, so we've captured a slice of audio, now let's play it back. For this to happen, we need to read the contents of the audio buffer and dump it to the DAC. The command for this is tab read or tab read 4. Tab read 4 is an interpolated version, so let's use that. All by itself, tab read won't do anything. It needs a signal to start reading. The signal contains the starting point for reading, the sample rate and the time needed for reading the contents of the audio buffer till the end. Now the standard length of the audio buffer is 1000 milliseconds and we can use that information for simple pitch shifting here. Changing the playback time to half a second will make the tab read object dump the contents of the audio buffer twice as fast obviously, doubling the frequency of the audio, which equals one octave. So let's add a 500 here. We will now feed these values into a V-line, which is a mechanism that moves from a starting point to an end point in a given amount of time. Connect that to the tab read command and the tab read command to the audio out. And when you connect the bang now to that value and click that, you will hear the sample slice we captured earlier. If the tuning of the octave isn't perfect, adjust the numbers by ear. Now, if you connect the delay bang from earlier to this construction, the, the tab read will start once a sample slice has been captured. Nice. Now I'll add a stereo delay to make the sound a bit more impressive. For this I'll add two del write and variable delay read commands and give them slightly varying delay times and dampers, a combination of band pass filters and amplifiers that lower the volume on each delay repetition. I've explained this part in detail in the previous video, so please watch that if you need more information. 
I'll just say that we're pushing audio into the delay line and then read that signal from that delay line to the audio output, but also to the beginning of the delay line again, forming an endless loop. The filter here will make each repetition a bit duller, which is a nice effect and eventually will make the audio fade away. We'll create this for both the left and right audio channel for a stereo effect. Right, now I want the grains to be played in random octaves. For this, I'll add a random 3 command here and a couple of multiples of 115, which represent the playback speeds. The select012 command will now trigger one of the playback speeds according to the random number it's receiving. We can now replace the constant time in the vline command by $1 and send our randomly selected playback time here with a TBF splitter, which is trigger bang float. The floating number will be used instead of the $1, resulting in one of three possible octaves for the pitch shifting. <laughs> Okay, this is beginning to sound not too bad already, but I think we'll need to add an envelope to the sample playback function to avoid clicking and popping sounds. So let's add a line and a volume control. Now let's tell the line to ramp up within 50 milliseconds the full volume and to zero within 75 milliseconds. We'll start the ramp down command 20 milliseconds after the simple envelope is started and connect this to the bang of the TBF splitter here. The bang will trigger both the ramp up and the delay, which will then trigger the ramp down, which controls the amplifier here. This is a very simple linear envelope, which should serve our needs here. <laughs> Let's also add an element of randomness to this effect. I want only every third sample to be played. We can do this by adding a random 3 element here, which will generate random numbers between 0 and 2. Attaching a select 012 element to this, and then connecting our sample recording mechanism to only one output, will reduce the chance of sample playback to 1 and 3. Let's also attach some hardware controls at places that make sense. One idea could be to control the probability of sample grains firing. So let's add a slider here and this command which reads the first knob on the hothouse pedal or this command which will read the first knob on Zynthian. Attaching a change object to this makes sure only actual control changes are passed. Hardware controls usually range from 0 to 1, so let's multiply this value by 5 and then add 1 and then convert the result to an integer number. At the end of this chain, we will get a number between 1 and 6, depending on the controller position. Now connect this to the random number generator like this. We can now change the range of this generator from 1 in 1 to 1 in 5, changing the probability of firing from 100% to 20%. <laughs> Another idea is to control grain length, which can range between 0 and 950 milliseconds. Let's put that on knob 4 and connect it to the metronome and the delay, which controls the stop signal. We can now change both times the recording interval and the length of the sample, which of course changes the size of the grains. Pressing the compile button in plug data will transfer this to the daisy seed, but you can also save the pure data patch and upload it to Zynthian like this. Now let's take a look at both and play around with the controls. 
Here's the Xynthian version. Here you have to add some control in objects and assign them MIDI CC numbers, for example 60 to 63. Then you need to write a JAML file that lists all the controls used as seen on screen. After that is done, zip both files into a folder and upload them to Xynthian using its web interface found on xynthian.local. After that's done, you can add an effects layer on your mixer screen that uses pure data. The screen will display the controls you assigned on the right side. Yeah, and that's it for today. A simple granular delay on Xynthian using pure data. In the next part of this series, we'll finally wrap up all the loose ends and install it on the hothouse paddle so we end up with a usable hardware paddle. Thanks again to Brilliant for sponsoring this series, and thanks for watching, and see you again very, very soon. Bye bye.